welcome to Isn't It Obvious. <laughs> you know, things, they're obvious. Stuff. Yeah. I'm your host, Sarah. Joining Santa's me. for president. Make America Florida again. <sighs> Joining me <laughs> is Micah and Phil. <laughs> so, my topic today. Isn't it obvious that nationalism is equivalent to religious fanaticism? <sighs> What's the difference between nationalism and patriotism? Same thing, I guess. I don't I don't know. That's, but yes. No. Well, I think nationalism, like... Nationalism is, is uberalism. Okay. Patriotism is just, like, kind of love of country, but yeah. nationalism is, like... We are the like, unquestionable... Religious un- level of... Yeah. Unrefutable best country that's ever happened, because I mean... Isn't nationalism kind of important for countries that are, like, split from geographical or demographics or the type of Well, you things? could argue religious... Like a religion is is the same of the same importance to people. I still think they're both gross. Well, <laughs> I I have to refute this out of the gate because nationalism has a tangible asset to it. Oh, tangible. Tangible, like like what? A- actual laws. And the codes. Bible doesn't have actual laws and codes not that, that are every about... Christian abides by, and certainly not that religious fanatics abide well, by, because they kind of make up their own rules. I mean, so do citizens sometimes. Sometimes citizens are just like, oh, this law? What is the... I'm just going to ignore this law. I'm going to park suggestion. here instead. <laughs> it's a suggestion. Right. In terms of well, speed limits, yeah. that's probably speed an easy yeah. law. Mm-hmm. Uh, but murder, you have to be very rich to get away with murder. And even then, that's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. I but mean, it has same, in, same, same, in, the, same it, in the Bible? Same in the, same, you know, you can, it's fine to murder if it's in the cause of God or whatever, but it's, it's obviously one of the ten, you know, commandments, thou shalt not kill. So, it's there. It's like but, number three, it's pretty important. But it's thou shalt not kill unless you deem them unworthy. It's the little hidden clause. After. I mean, same like, thing with, for the King James Bible. same thing with nationalism thou shalt not kill unless we send our soldiers to kill the other because they are unworthy we don't have laws that say thou shalt not kill we have murder is bad and punishable by prison term but soldier murder that's different soldier murder is different police murder is different self-defense murder is different Mm -hmm. which i would say like doctor murder while the bible doesn't have like like murdering doctors or doctors murdering but i still think palindrome (laughs) i still think there are rules in society and rules in religious sects, right? But are you saying, like, don't deal with the fanatics, don't deal with the uh, whatever that Mormon cult was that was marrying 12 year olds so the old man could feel young for fucking a preteen? Gross. Yeah, very much so. Or don't take that. Take the blandest. Take an average Lutheran or a recovering Catholic. Thank you. We're pretty bland. Yeah. And replace that with the average sense of patriotism or nationalism. Are those the same thing? People who follow the rules, keep their head down, abide by what's going on with a bit of pride in their nation, but they're not one to Or a bit of pride in their religious Right. I feel I have community. comfort in life knowing that Jesus died on his cross for my sins and I'm guaranteed to go to heaven. That gives me a lot of comfort in my life. Which is why I'm not gonna rub it in people's face. I'm not gonna try and prophetize to them. I think I said that right. I think you uh, did too, weirdly. Yeah, I know. Maybe I mean, I'm the dumb. I don't know. We'll have to see on the on the recording later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just censor it. Reap uh, <laughs> <laughs> But I have my criticisms of our country. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yes, you but do. But there are very few other countries I would like to live in. That's true. They all kind of suck. Of Just problems. like religions all kind of suck. Anyway, sorry. Except for my religion, know. it's okay. I mean, my, it's, my, it could be better, but... You know. My religion fucking rules. Hell, Satan. Yeah, well, the TST, I have to say, are the troll troll religion. Mm-hmm. I, I really do appreciate their yeah. um, cunningness. But I appreciate their message. I'm going to put a statue of Bahamut up if you're going to put your little statue on of whatever. Bahamut. 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 Whatever. A statue of some goat dude mm. uh, because you have the Ten Commandments yeah. on your mm-hmm. on your um, <clears throat> courthouse. Courthouse, whatever. Or public land. Public, public, public or government, yeah. government, government land property. or something. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, we're going to also ask for a statue of of this goat dude as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of... Bahamut know, brings peace. They're, they're really good at, at playing religious chicken. And I, I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> I, I, yeah, me too. I, I feel like as far as nationalism goes, that there is some, like, like I was saying, tangible, tangible uh, goods here. Are they that tangible, though? 
Yeah, it, it allows. We... Well, it's not. It's not like an ephemeral. You will burn in hell if you don't abide by my rules of but my religion. It's you will go to jail or you will be fined. There's still consequences for right. breaking the rules, right? True, but these are. But there's still laws. But they're different in states, so you can compare them that way because well, we all do have fifty microcosms of laws. Different. You can compare it to other religious, countries. You can different yeah. religious um, but sects it's... within. The umbrella of Christianity. Yeah. Right, but if you're going under that fact, you have to take the under the assumption that God exists and God does not exist. Yeah, we also so have that to, automatically also have to takes have... out a lot of legitimacy because laws in countries exist. Yeah, but... and they are enforced. I mean, you can't say that God doesn't exist because you haven't yes, failed to anyway. prove the null <laughs> hypothesis. But go on, sir. You can't prove it. anyway. Um... No, I'm, I'm not proving the negative. We're gonna prove it's on you because you believe. Yeah. Fair enough. Looking at but you, what Sarah. A... Why are, you, why are you looking at me? Anyway, but all of our laws, all of our laws and our government institutions are still all faith-based. It's it's an agreement in a community. The community is just extremely large, and it is a country. It's a social contract, yes. Yeah, which is kind of what religion is, in a way. It's just got some spiritual bullshit in there. So. But it's where the legitimacy of... Sorry. It's, it's where the legitimacy lies in the power to enforce these laws. It's the tangible. church doesn't have power, or ha- I mean, we we certainly no, have crippled the power the, over time. Because the damnation in religion is upsetting God and suffering the afterlife. Yeah, but you can still like burn people to death on a stake on behalf of the church because you burn a witch because you don't like her because or she's even, got some weird wooey shit in her house. Even worse, or, or we haven't burned a witch in like thirty years. Mm, plus or minus ten years. Look, <laughs> that means plus. How does that work? Um, <laughs> we will burn one. We'll burn one in ten years. Yeah, exactly. The other thing too is, I was gonna say, uh, or worse, you can excommunicate somebody, which is pretty like hard. Which is ostracize, ostracize, exile, exile, ostracization. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I mean, I'm especially going for eight syllable words tonight. But that is that ruins a life. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that is worse to be like excommunicated and exiled from your community. Oh yeah. Is worse than going to jail for six months or two years. Or because you're not losing your humanity in that situation, unless you're going to like a I dis- maximum security. Prison. I was gonna say I disagree. Going to prison is not. You are losing your humanity. You're basically being shoved into a cage. You can't piss without. You know, you can, there's no door that you can control. There's no privacy that you have. Like you don't. You're not human in a in a jail cell. I hate to say this. You're also slave labor. You know those we things don't, we don't that say. The 13th Amendment. You know those things that say "made in the USA." Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're all fucking prison right. slavery. It's yeah, prison so, economics. So <laughs> we have issues in this country. And what about like okay, ex like exile from a country? Like we don't but really do you... exile except for like we do. Um, what's the word? Uh, we will send people back to their original deportation. country. Deportation. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. We have deportation, but I don't think we have exile really. Or rendition, I guess, if we're going to do it clandestinely. But they used to do exiles. Um, like yeah. It's very legally weird and probably rare where the government decides to revoke citizenship to somebody to murder them by drone. Like, that seems odd. I agree. That doesn't happen uh, compared to just saying in jail you just or in prison you're just stuck there for six months and then you're but then, out. But this whole the prison facet is also taking the horrible legal care that we have in this country. If you go to other more liberal democracies in the world, their prison care is a lot better. That's true. And then there's other places in the world where they have like, I don't know, 50 people in one cell. I saw like... Oh, yeah. uh, uh, yeah, Thailand has a land area problem. I, really no, I saw a, a prison cell, I think it was in the Philippines or something, and there were like, just like, I don't know, 30 or 40 men, all like... Oh yeah, when they had flooding, a bunch of them drowned, and they just like left them in there while the guards left. I don't know, it was like horrible, like you can't, like there were like one. people standing, and like they're pressed up against each other, and there's like, on the side of the room, there was like dudes sleeping, and they're all curled up because there's no room. Yeah. Like it's, I don't, yeah, so... They had that in uh, <laughs> Syria and Iraq. Where they had survivors yeah. of political prisoners explaining their arrangement, and it's like, oof. Prison that, is not a good that's thing. That's not. I, it's not a good. Um, I don't think it's a good way to punish people, honestly. But I don't know if it's. This, I don't know if there's any because better. I don't have it, better. <laughs> prison <laughs> wasn't. Well, the idealized prison that America wanted was actually to rehabilitate and remove a social discontent from society. Not the people who designed them. I can tell you that much. But go ahead. But no, that changed. <laughs> 
Because then you did need that slave labor. So then they did because also you money. couldn't have slaves also anymore. Money. Yeah, for profit prisons are bad. We should not have for profit. Just prisons. like religion is very for profity. I was gonna. What are you talking about? The Catholic Church is money. like tithes, this close to bankruptcy. Taxes, and that's amazing. Tithes and taxes. It's I think that the Mormon this Church is close to going bankruptcy. Is uh, like so, what they have like a hundred billion dollars. Yeah. I mean that's crazy good. Mm-hmm. And they don't get but all that because it's a church. Yeah, which so you should tax churches. crazy good. For them. Well, it's all land, right? Don't they well, own majority yeah, of Utah? Right. I mean, they just basically invest, and mm-hmm. it grows, and then they invest, and it grows. I mean, the Mormons are not dumb. Um, Except that they chose Utah. Well, they didn't really choose Utah. No, they didn't. Utah yeah. kind of... Well, <laughs> they well, were kind of forced. When you, have, when you have a con artist <laughs> who gets found out in New York, and then in Pennsylvania, and then in Ohio, and then in Illinois, and then in Missouri... <laughs> You, you really got to go west a while yeah. in a place where you're like, nobody's going to want to live here, right? Pretty much. It's just all mountains. And Look at that lake. Weird Ooh, we can go swing. Why yeah. is it so salty? I, I think that there's a problem with uh, religion and nationalism comparison, though. I mean, because with nationalism, uh, you can clearly see how that goes in hyper crazy mode. Like, name a country that went nationalist and went good. I, I can't think of any. Japan. Mm. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, try again. Mm. Try again. I will just say hi. I'm sorry, post 1832, mm. Japan mm. nationalism no. did a whole lot of good for yeah. that country. I'm sure. A whole lot of bad for neighbors. Yeah. Good for Japan. Let me just say hi to the Okinawa listener in <laughs> Japanese. I'm sure that was the original language back then, right? Okay, so um, God damn it. I, I don't really think that there's any good coming from nationalism that is that hyper crazy. And uh, for religion, like a nothing, hyper... Nothing good comes from that either. A hyper religion is... I mean, you're gonna horrifying. Think, I murdered a bunch of masseuses because they tempted me into thinking impure thoughts, and it's fine by my religion to kill them because they're the temptresses. Uh, yeah, and you know Spanish that's really messed up. But <laughs> we don't investigate that. We don't. <laughs> no one expects it either. I, I was, expect that. <laughs> I was going to go ahead and say there are religions that are not just of the Abrahamic branch that when they go full tilt into it, I I don't know if it's that detrimental to their country. It acts like a glue. Taiwan. Do you know how many religious cults there are in Taiwan that destroy human lives in Taiwan? A lot. Yeah, I was thinking more like Confucianism or like Buddhism or Hinduism, right? Like it's not good, but it's (laughs) not of a social glue that keeps people in sort of their place so that things can keep moving without chaos, it's kind of like dull poison, right? Like you need just a little bit so that you can organize. And an organized country is a good country because it is a stable country and a stable country is an economically fruitful country, Mm -hmm. right? So like you need to have these simple civilization steps and a gung-ho religion like that from the eastern side, yeah, they can go kind of crazy, but like it is... The Taliban are going to be great. They're going to have fantastic statecraft. Again... Taliban and and uses an Abrahamic branch. Yeah, we We all know that that's all just for the same poisonous tree. (laughs) Crusady. It's a little (laughs) Catholics, but it is kind of um, (laughs) right. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks for thinking you're all super special. Anyway, only able kills Cain. I I want to make a religion out of that. (laughs) Please (laughs) note, no, just (laughs) the AU Bible. God created the heavens and the earth in about 4.6 billion years. And then for the next about a billion or so, he did a lot of experiments, none of which were in his image. But, you know, he put in some seeds of which some experiments could happen. Mm -hmm. Because God is simply a child with a Petri dish. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Or not. Maybe it's just the universe and that's just how fucking it happened and there it is. Probably. Seems probably. Probably. I feel yeah, like that's, yeah, that's probably a little more real, li- yeah. realistic. No, probably. No, no. Probably. I like, I like probably. a very kind of God. It is I mean, very it's refle- sure. it, You're bringing back the hallmarks of, you know, pantheism from the Greeks and Romans, where it's like, yes, they're all powerful, but oh my God, there's some petty bitches. Mm, I like that, you know, in the deities, just mm-hmm. pettiness. Yeah, you see that? You see that Athena? She popped out of a pimple. Yeah. You tried to pop your pimple? You might have killed a god. Several mm-hmm. gods. Oh, I'm pockmarked to all hell. I have committed so much deicide. Anyway, gross. <laughs> Did the Romans have nationalism? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Did they? Well, Did the, they? The, the Roman trajectory oh. and the American trajectory are so incredibly similar, it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Incredibly 
similar. Just, even even in the leaders that they had, and but, that we but have. It's, but it's so <laughs> funny because it's all post World War II when we were established as the world's only superpower at the time. However, briefly until Russia was like, "Wait, we can just throw people at problem. Mm-hmm. Let us throw people at problem." Question: When yeah. was when was in God we trust? Branded. 1957. 1957? It was made our motto in 1954. It was put on our money in 1957. Okay. Under the Eisenhower administration. So that's like... Thanks, MacArthur. Ten-ish years after the World War II? Okay. Yeah. And, and that was after communism, like after USSR solidified so they're trying the to, Eastern yeah, Bloc. Yeah, they're starting to recover from... Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we're like, yeah, Well, let's... they got their own German scientists and were yeah. a military threat. Because again, we throw people at the problem. I mean, we got the German scientists too. They just got the other half. Yep. They got the ones with less more. What? No, we took people from like Auschwitz and shit like that. So. Oh yeah, von Braun. Mm-hmm. But nationalism is kind of. Uh, I don't see that as a glue. I'll just say that much. No, because you can't be it. I feel like unlike exactly... religion. In religion, if you have, you know, if you're a Mormon and you have super crazy Mormon, you have an understanding. You're like, ah, eh, we're apples from the same tree. You're just a little rotten. So, eh. but. Yeah, we live in the same God. Mm. And, you know, sex sheet. Well, or you have, you know, your typical... We'll just use the United States because this is the this is our country. Um, you have the typical moderate American, and then you have the weird, crazy nationalist Americans. Do you have an understanding? We still, like... No, from the moderate still to love... the... From the moderate to the extremist, yes, the, but the, the extremist page, to the moderate, let's... no. Okay, maybe not... Um, okay, maybe, maybe you moderate. Have more maybe of moderate isn't religion. quite... Maybe moderate isn't quite the right word. Patriot and nationalist. You have a patriot who loves America, serves the country. You know, they, they're doing the right, you know, doing all the right things in their mind. They're following the rules, obeying the laws. They believe in the country. They believe that we're on the right track and they are, have a vested interest in, you know, where the country is going. And then you have the crazy nationalist who's like the religious fanatic who just takes it to the nth degree. Don't they have like a love of country in common? Quick question. Is there a difference between extreme nationalist and white nationalist? I don't exactly see a lot of minorities as the extreme nationalist side. It really only is white nationalists. White nationalists are, their identity is not just country, it's also race. It's, it's, they believe that their country is also their race. But do, but do we have (laughs) in this country. Which is weird because they're stupid anyway. Non-white nationalist nationalists to the same extent. Yeah, I don't know. I would say... I don't, like, I don't see a Black Panther party out there waving flags No, or... but, like, what about the Tea Party? They're kind of... White nationalists, yes. Not all of them, though. Not all of them are white. They not... aren't. Not all of them are. I agree that not... Are... Not, <laughs> not, not... the not majority all... of them are white. <laughs> right, but not all <laughs> yeah. Proud Boys are white. They're still a white nationalist militia. Right. I would agree that not all of them, but, I mean, the theme here... Yeah, the yeah. Venn diagram is, like, <laughs> slightly blurry. But is there... Basically, the question I see it is... Are there leftist nationalists? Are there liberal nationalists? I mean, because when I think of nationalists, I think of conservative, gun-toting. Yeah, you I know, see the, the um, they're going to wear the American truck. flag on I, I yeah. think, everything. Yeah. You know? As a white nationalist. Ooh. Uh-oh. Liberal? Confession time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, takes off shirt, puts on Proud Boy shirt. No, you got to put on your American flag overalls with nothing else. And some like really shitty like sandals, and that's it. That's that's sandals. You fucking communist in America. We wear Crocs. Whatever. They can be Crocs. I thought it was boots, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> can we like you don't breathe? Your feet get sweaty, and oh. like that arch support really hurt. You just slap in some. I mean, waterproof. I just don't consider. They stay on your feet with that little band that definitely does not cut into your Achilles tendon. I mean, fair enough. Definitely but... doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I think that leftists and those that speak up against the inequalities in this country are better nationalists. They're not nationalists, they're patriots. Better patriots, but they see the errors of this country and are using the only means that they can to try and change it. Yeah, but are they like fanatics? Are they... Some are. I mean, there are, you can go with like anarcho-communists who want the state destroyed and everything to go to regional support, which I don't think will work. It wouldn't. But I'm also a person that believes that we probably shouldn't have nations anymore because oh. nations lead to problems. Just like religion. True. Mm. But they're not the same. I would agree that there are... I feel like they are, though. Like, on a on a certain level, I think they are. Yeah, there's still the discrepancy of tangible assets. You have tangible assets in a government. You don't have tangible assets in a religion. Except for all the hundred billion I was going to say, <laughs> except for, like, the fucking no, all the that's land. That's all in property. That's not liquid. But property in land... They don't have that money. 
they have paperwork? Look, look at what's happening to the Catholic Church. Because of COVID, their cash cow of all of their museums and shit that they fleeced all of their loyal uh, followers for dried up, and they're on the verge of fucking bankruptcy. Which is awesome. But I just want to say, um, thank they... God, but also... <laughs> That's Baphomet for you. Mm. But they still have Ulysses, tangible assets. They have so. they have churches. They have land. They have places of worship. That is tangible, no, but, and those are assets. But that's not the tangible asset of... A country is yeah. land. Because the country still owns that. Yeah, well, and... So, sure, until, the church, air quotes, owns it. That's still U.S. soil. That is still the purview know, of the U.S. government. Yeah, but they're still the same, like, they're still tangible assets. And but it's the same tangible asset. And you can take away... America the, can say the area of a church is still America, and the church says it's theirs, but America supersedes that church. Because that can be... Con- yes, that can well, be condemned. Yeah, because I can... I, what can, America I, could, I think a lot of churches... A, you a lot of churches a might beg... No, a down. lot of churches might beg to differ, is all I'm yeah, saying. they're wrong. <laughs> they are wrong. Because they the are. state beats but, religion. But the state is also kind of bullshit, Unless, too, because the state is... It's just, you know, I have a flag. I've declared this soil to be American But more people believe soil. in that flag than people believe in that religion. That's true, but that's just like saying a big religion and a small religion aren't... on like. Yeah, one is definitely more legitimate than the other. And the big religion, because more people believe in it, is more still the same type of thing. They're still the same animal. Like, it's just one is but bigger than the other. scale is relevant in terms of... Because uh, ca- I would say Catholic Church is bigger than a lot of countries in this world. So, with those smaller countries that don't have that pull or power or even barely border, like, they... Do they not have the same relevance as as the Catholic Church then? Yeah. Like, what I'm saying is, like, they're small countries... Only exist because no one else wants it, I guess. What? Like, <laughs> That's true. There no, are... no, no. What do you mean by no one else wants it? Like, no one wants to gobble them up. Yeah, no one just no, wants no to take one, their territory. No one cares. So, There's nothing yeah. there for that. There's no... In- so the global stability of the last 70 years, post-World War II, where not a lot of country borders have shifted in that time. Some have, mm. but in a whole, the map is not very different from 1945 to today. It really isn't. Borders mm. are pretty sound. Yeah. I mean, the most egregious was Russia reincorporating Georgia and Peninsula. And in Somaliland and other places. Yeah. Well, yeah. Somaliland? And Ethiopia splitting into two. and Sudan. Sudan. Oh, yeah, sorry. Sudan's, I mean, yeah. Ethiopia might, depending on if Tigray tries to declare mm. independence. But also, like, African politics is so fucked up because of colonialism which colonialism <laughs> colonialism and nationalism go hand in hand they sure do they i sure explained do. this to one of our board game just like friends from religious missions anyway go on a long time ago <clears throat> where nationalism allows you to hide lots of nasty things in plain sight it's so like is religion oh, really religion yeah the, the fanatical <laughs> belief though is the discrepancy yeah they're they're both fanatic they both are fa- <laughs> like fanatic level is what i'm saying to the, the point that they're harmful i think the strange thing though with nationalism Nationalism is that there's an expectation that you're going to get something out of it. Whereas religion, I just don't... Like, as a person that wants uh, a contract or wants to know what's in it for me... Like Your if immortal I, soul? Commun- no. Uh. C- community, solidarity, and comfort. Right. That's what religion provides. I suppose that's true. I think Regardless of the, the purpose, scale of it. It provides, yeah, purpose. Yeah. Um, it, it gives you a sense of moral rightness. Yeah. It gives you a, a community. It establishes a... Hugely. Far more specific us versus them, which is a lot more comfortable to deal with. Gives some, it gives some self exceptionalism. It's more just difficult. Like nationalism. Yeah, it's more difficult in nationalism. It, it's easier in nationalism to disregard people not of your country, but it's difficult for that to become your country's prerogative. But, Unlike religion, where religion you can clearly declare an other, and there's a lot know, more comfort and ease in declaring that well, other. I would because say the only real difference. I guess the only difference now that I'm now that you say that is that religion has no border and a country does. That's the yeah. only difference I can say. Unless, of course, nationalism leads to colonialism, in which case, oh, of course, what borders? Well, no, right. <laughs> They're just arbitrary. You mean, but, <laughs> sure, religion doesn't have borders, but nationalism has connections. You don't. The Catholic Church doesn't trade with the Lutheran Church, you know, or doesn't change or doesn't trade uh, tangible uh, assets with yeah, uh, the Mons in the Middle East or a with lot of, no, a lot sheets. of no, a lot of religious um, institutions. institutions absolutely communicate with other religious institutions yeah. outside of their own, like for like charity events or like even just a small individual. The Catholic Church, like there's the Catholic Church, is a weird outlier because. 
it has maintained its hierarchy and its uh, seat of power for as long as it has. There is no central authority for Islam. There is no central authority for Lutheranism or Evangelicalism or Buddhism uh, or Hinduism. Shinto or Hindu. Well, I was going to say... There is no head leader. There's no pope of Hinduism. That's true, but there are, like, archbishops, and there are, like, organizational heads. Like, there are... Brahmins. Priest yeah, class. Like, there are... Right. It, that's dealing with weird subsets and small... That You're not dealing with big religious swings of trade like you deal with America trading with uh, agnostic China or with a Hindu India. But I do think the Vatican does trade. I really do. They're, they trade? say that... What? They, they say that they're bankrupt, but I don't believe it. Like, no. their vaults are never audited by no, anybody no, no. because... True, they but just have... their assets that they bought up that they now cannot pay for because they don't have that liquid... I guess they'll just have to sell their properties yep. or something. Wow. The other thing, too, about the... like a fucking chateau in Switzerland that's like... 4.8 million. Gorgeous. I feel like there's a problem with, uh, <laughs> I, I have a hard time separating nationalism with religion because they so, they go so hand in hand. Well, one leads into the other. Right. It's just wonderful in the sense that if you're trying to make an engine that's just absolutely terrible for everybody, why not marry these things together? That's just like a great idea. <laughs> and then go and on an <laughs> expedition and, and start and conquering do, other right. nations. No one's going to stop you. Uh, no one will stop you until someone stops you. Well, because that's I think that the wonderful part about religion is that you actually get a lot of rubes that think that they're doing good. Um, I think... Um, nationalism. Uh, was it Stephen Fry? or No, it was um, uh, Penn of uh, Penn and Teller. Right? Mm-hmm. He said that if you are really a believer, you would do everything you can to make sure your friends don't go to hell forever. Mm-hmm. Like... In today's time, it's very unfashionable to say that you're going to hell. Like, but you know, 50 years or a generation ago, that was the bully pulpit of why religion existed. You have the carrot and the stick. We only talk about the carrot, and we kind of laugh at it. Like, there's nothing there. But back in the day, fear was a really good motivator, and people really legitimately thought they were going straight to the inner rings of hell if they didn't do this, and that their neighbor that they they enjoyed talking with and that were friends weren't converted. So of course they had every interest to make sure that they were saved and Isn't that fucking horrible it is it, but they were thinking that they were doing good like they were legitimately thinking that look i am a good guy this person's a good guy we're both good guys i'm going to convert them because i love that person or that i mean religiously speaking and nationalism is kind of the other way around where it's like hey my name is bubba fett what's in it for me right like i only care about the bottom line and nationalism makes it so that other countries that are weaker get to pay the bill for my life why not and if you get those two things together holy shit will you have a powerhouse you have all the rubes that try to do nice things with all the jackasses who don't and you get a nice mixture of just world war one join or die join or die evangelicals evangelicals are that merch they're trying they're they're trying doing what they can to make america gilead yep and, and nobody's really stopping them. Yeah, we, we always... Except for, like, just pure laziness of the American people. <laughs> like... No, but... There's there's not enough... Like, there are enough of them to, like, do whatever they think they want to do, but most of them are not, like, actually willing to, to take that... Like, they aren't quite... They're too, they're too comfortable, is what I'm saying. They're too comfortable in their shitty lives that they have now that they wouldn't... There's, they're not hungry enough, in my mind, they aren't, to, to actually, like, take over the government and, like, have... And, and, actually follow through on the insurrection kind of thing and like stage that coup we'll find out tomorrow yeah. they, <clears throat> they try just, they try but i just don't think um, i mean you just look at the history of scientology to see just how insidious these organizations can be mm. and they're very i think that there was a study that said in a riot like where you have people kind of just marching through the streets causing havoc how many people does it take to move that crowd like it's it's kind of crazy to think about that you have like a school of fish but they're not a school of fish they're human beings mm. And how do you know that this crowd is going to go to Main Street or if it's going to go to the business sector? And um, it turns out that I think Harvard did a study that it only takes 14% of the people to be able to move for the rest of the people to kind of blindly follow. And if those 14% are clever, you could probably get um, the rest to just think that they're making the choice on their own, but really it's just an illusion. It's mob think. Well, that's yeah. why the analysis of January 6th is going to be interesting when a 
lot more of this is fleshed out. Yeah. And we're not dealing with the criminal aspects of what happened, but we look at the psychology of why it happened. Because you had people in there that knew exactly what they were doing. They mm-hmm. knew what the plan was. Right. And they prepared for it, and they had other people there who prepared Yeah, for they it. had fucking shirts with a date on it. Yep. They absolutely knew this was going <laughs> to happen. That's when you know that they're... That, that <laughs> I feel, is the pop shit. That, that's the... Yeah. 80, but, that's the 86% that'll follow that think yeah, it's like those some are like, Oh, yeah, this is going to be fun. We're going like, to uh, be there January 6th. Maybe yeah. a percentage... <laughs> Take the capital. Save the date. Yeah. yeah. Like, a non-zero Both. percentage of those people are like, oh, maybe it'll happen. But they're not planning on no, it. No, yeah. They're like, well, if it happens, yeah. you know, you've got my pitchfork. but And my axe, but... <laughs> and my Confederate flag. <laughs> There's a joke that we, that I um, that a libertarian co-worker told me in my last life, which I thought was hilarious, was um, that everyone in Congress is in the super big plane. The biggest plane ever is just 500, and, um, 500 congressmen and women. And 500. Senators, 535. 538. 538, yeah. Yeah, plus the vice president. And they're all on this plane, and they're all begging the pilot not to crash. Like, because the pilot hates them all, right? <laughs> and they're all trying to bribe Mike him. Mike is the pilot. And, <laughs> I'm getting, He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's like, I'll take this. <laughs> it, it, it makes me laugh because it's like, wow, how deeply unpopular is the Senate? How deeply unpopular is the Congress? Um, and, and yet you have January 6th, and that's not a joke. Right. Like no, there was people that were like saying, oh, yeah, um, we're taking this plain joke into reality. And one of the things of, about the psychology is that had they succeeded, like, I don't know what the next steps would be. Obviously, there would be vice like, you know, like you have a president, vice president, like a governor, vice governor. There's got to be some successor. But that is a scary thought that had they succeeded and they, you know, because again, the 14% can lead them there, but they can't, like a fog of war style, they can't control the 86. Mm-hmm. They can only kind of control where the mayhem goes. But after that point, all bets are off. If Oof. any elected official on either political spectrum or Bernie Sanders. Guys. <laughs> 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 Andrew, yeah. <laughs> did yeah. <laughs> receive any physical harm, the hammer would have fallen on right-wing extremism and hardcore. Right. You cannot, you can disagree with elected politicians and that is a favorite pastime of America, has been forever. We should just bring back duels. It might solve more things. That's yeah, mm-hmm. really. Yeah. But if Mitt Romney wasn't turned around by that Capitol Police officer, he ran to that mob, he would have had less than a 5% chance of getting out of it without any physical harm. Right. Because that mob didn't care who they came across. If they spot, saw a suit, they were going to beat the fuck out of that suit. Yeah. The same with uh, Mitch McConnell, who had to be like a child, dragged like from arm to arm, like as if someone had to like quickly escort an old turtle. Yeah. And I'm like, um, it's it's surprising though that they, like after the threat is gone, that, you know, they're now it's back to a game of politics and, you know, nationalism, I guess. But I agree, that mob, as far as being, I haven't seen a religious mob in a while, but <laughs> <laughs> on the TV like I haven't seen that level of just pure like hey we're just gonna go here and wreck shit like some of them were goofy some of them were really angry like they it had was a, a fucking s- prayer circle right it was a strange I mean like you look at our other type of riots that occurred in our great state and you mm-hmm. kind of see more of this um, just anger anger and it, there's no there's no religious there was no religious um it was sparked because of George Floyd right. in, in Minnesota. It was state-sanctioned. It wasn't it, just George Floyd. It was it spurred was, it on was, by the callous nature that was of his the, murder. That was the spark. Yeah. That was the, but it was long history. It's yeah, Fernando it's, Castillo. Yep, it's, it's Elijah. All the way back. Oh, fuck. What's his name? He'll back up that now. A kid in Colorado who was just walking home yep. and just was given a lethal dose of a sedative. Yeah, these fucking... because he's a twenty-three-year-old like buck forty dude who the police were like, "Nah, he's black. We we're gonna need backup these, on this." These yeah, these no, <laughs> these black men and women who are shot and killed in the street, you know, uh, for, by public officials. That is what the rage was. Mm-hmm. There was nothing religious. It was just no, yeah. no, it was against. And they just violence. were they were so mad that they just fucking were like, nope, we've had it. We're gonna just right. destroy shit. We're this just was... we are so mad. We're gonna set. Set if you places on do fire. not provide a place for peaceful protest, violent protest is the only yep. remaining response. Yep, and but, and I don't like agree that this would like I don't I don't like the fact that this happened, but I also understand why it happened. And like I honestly don't know what else these people could have done at this point. But also the other aspect that I like that the Republican like national Republicans and uh, conservative media always hark on is like they destroyed so many businesses. So? Not 
single house. Yeah. yeah. How many people died? A few. A few. Yeah. But that was like more so it was people protesting that something happened, they were trampled, and that's how they died. Or yeah, it was a like Kyle Ridden house. But where it wasn't a fucking dude went there to murder people and was murdered and approached the cops with a gun and the cops were like, No, he's white, that's fine. Yeah. God damn it. It's it's kind of strange though because the the rage you'd see in a kind of George Floyd riot is the only way I can describe it coldly is a lesson learned for civic leaders about what a risk table means. Mm-hmm. You keep pushing the edge about your policies to save money or to kind of like shortchange your citizenry. You got to look at the risk side of what your citizens are going to do back. Mm-hmm. Like they're going to either be sheep a- or they're going to explode. And that is something that policymakers have to understand in the future that it costs a lot of money to fix an explosion. Yeah. Way more than it is just to prevent it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But or do the fucking or right do thing. the right thing. Just do the right no, fucking but thing. But here's right. the thing: we're America. One, we rarely ever do the right thing, and two, <laughs> until we do everything wrong. Yeah. In Christ, <laughs> Churchill. God damn. And two, we're not about preventative care. Mm. We only care when shit gets terminal. Yep. Why? Why That's are we not? Change. This is you know, just this is what I, this is. Yeah, I know it's money, Micah. I know, but he's making a he's making a, a money three finger a three finger rub over there. <laughs> and, but you know what else it is. Okay, oh. get out of here with your and shit. And that, <laughs> my friends, is the end of the episode. I am going to call it the end of the Sarah's episode, but I'm sorry that noise means we're out of time. So thanks, Mom. Okay, I have to say thanks on after that. Oh. <laughs> I am sorry, Mom. I am so sorry. Thanks, Mom. And everybody support your local sex shops and get your butt plugs. Okay, and hey, anyway, thanks for joining us. That's all we're, we've got today. There was some things said. That's, that's it. It can't be unsaid. can't be unsaid. Anal beads!